Well, grace and peace to you on this night from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, it seems almost cliche in our world to say that God is in control or that we are in God's hands. When I was in Sunday school, we used to have this little song that went, he's got the whole world in his hands, 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 and there were verses. He's got you and me brother, he's got you and me sister, he's got the little bitty baby, he's got you and me. It's a great little song. Nice little message. God's got you, and you are safe. It's hard to believe that in the world in which we live, full of its pain and suffering and destruction and violence. And yet that is the promise we hope for, that God has us, that we are in God's hands. It's something we worry about. It's something we're anxious for. Could it really be true amidst all the destruction and pain we see around us. Uh, I read recently that uh, the human brain has this capacity to push things aside. You know, the things that we're really worried about, but we don't really think about that much. Uh, total calamity, you know, a meteor striking Earth and wiping us all out. I mean, of course, we're worried about that, but we don't think about it that much. Or planes falling out of the sky and vanishing. Or buildings blowing up or nations mounting up their troops, going ready uh, and puffing their chests, looking like war might be coming. We think about those things, we worry about those things, but what the brain does is shove those things to the side so we worry about more uh, urgent things that seem a little bit more close to home. Like the train is out, how am I gonna get home? Or what am I gonna eat for dinner tonight? Or does a black really go with khaki pants? I don't know. Someone says, yes, awesome. Uh, or is the person sitting next to me, do they, do they like me? We worry about those things. Our brain pushes those other things to the side, even though we worry about them too, anxious about them, we pray about them, we think about them, we talk about them. Does God have us? Are we safe? Jesus offers us something different tonight than the worries that burden us so much. He says, do not worry. I don't think he's saying, don't engage and be aloof. I don't think he's saying, uh, don't care about it. I don't think he's saying, uh, don't be active in seeking the good. I don't think he's saying, don't be human. What I do think he's saying is don't let it consume you. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't let your fear determine who you are. And he gives two examples. He says, think about the birds. We're at the time of year where the birds are starting to come back. I witnessed uh, two birds today outside my window uh, having an argument, I think, over which sticks they should gather for their nest. They seemed pretty into it. I'm not sure they really won that. Uh, th but they'll be building their shelters. They'll be in the trees soon. Those nests will be there. They'll be gathering the food that they need. And before long, you'll see little baby birds around. As the summer marches on, you'll hear those songbirds singing. Doesn't mean they aren't fragile. Doesn't mean calamity can't strike. But if we have a sense of awe and wonder for the world that God has given us in which we live, if we can wrap our brains around that God cares even for the littlest bird, Jesus asks, don't you think God cares even more about you? And then he says, consider the lilies of the field. Consider the flowers. Before long, our uh, church will be filled with Easter lilies, that beautiful sign that Easter has come, the promise of new life. I didn't get a lily for tonight, but I did get an orchid, and it's here. Its roots are stretched into the soil, 
that root it and keep it anchored and the nutrients that it needs and that support that it needs. It has those big green leaves to soak up the energy from the sun. It's stretching up tall and it has that beautiful flower. It's beautiful. The world that we live in with all of its ugliness and brokenness and sinfulness and pain and suffering is created to be beautiful and good. Soon outside, through the remnants of the snow, those buds will start pushing up to recreate this new beautiful world that is before us again in springtime. If you've ever seen a meadow full of wildflowers, you see the colors painted across the land. We ourselves like flowers. We gather them. We put them in pots. We put them in gardens. We cut them and put them in church and in our homes because they're beautiful. If God can make a world that is, is beautiful, despite the way we view it and are afraid of it and live in it, don't you think God cares even more about you? We don't stand in the world naked and alone where the conditions crush us and where other, others will crush us too. We stand like the flowers, dressed like flowers, dressed more beautiful than flowers because you and I have been wrapped in the promises of God and you and I have been clothed in Christ who clothes us and protects us and reminds us even in spite of all of the things we see in this world, the things we're afraid of, the things we worry about, that God's answer to that is the cross. And the promises that we find there wrap us and engulf us. You wear them, not just a black pullover and khakis, but Christ who wraps you, clothes you, to contribute to the good, to be a person that brings those promises into the brokenness and knows that no matter what happens to us, even when it seems like the sky is falling, that each of us are in God's hands. Amen.